Hi there, my name is Tom. I'm a maritime English teacher in Stavanger, Norway on school ship Gan. Today I'm going to be going through Unit 5B, Exercises 1 through 8. Unit 5B deals with cargo handling. So we're going to be looking at the different language used in cargo handling. The book I'm teaching is English for Mariners by Tony Grice. Here's a picture of Tony down here. It's an open source textbook produced by the Leonardo da Vinci Transfer of Innovation Program sponsored by the EU. So if you would like a copy of the worksheet that I am doing in Unit 5, you can find a link where you found this YouTube video as well. The PowerPoint I made for this video is available as well. There's a link for that as well. Okay, let's get started started. As usual, we start out with some research questions. Here, you're going to take five minutes, and hopefully you know some of these words, but the ones you don't, you should use a dictionary, or go to the internet, or in some way, try to find the answers to these questions. Here we go. Five minutes. <laughs> All I need are some tasty waves, cool buzz, and I'm fine. Hey bud, what's your problem? Bond. James Bond. I'll be back.
to normal. You'll never be that. Not the man I knew ten years ago. It's not the years. It's the mileage. Oh yeah, it's not the years, it's the mileage. Isn't that the truth? All right, let's get started now and look at the answers. Number one, perishable goods or perishable cargo. Well, you should have remembered from last time, if you went through Unit 5A, the last half, we looked at the different types of cargo dangerous cargo, perishable cargo, and fragile cargo. So those are three words you should definitely know. Perishable goods, what are they? Well, they're liable to go bad, or we say spoil or rot without refrigeration. So the correct answer here would not be dangerous, because that's another type, or not fragile, not heavy, so it's going to be fresh. So if you remember from last time, uh, we had these fresh meat, fresh fruit, fresh fish. We're talking about it will go bad quite quickly if you don't put it in the refrigerator. Vegetables could fall under here, dairy products, milk, cream, Butter. Remember, we also said the type of vessels that carry uh, perishable cargo are called reefers, right? Reefers, and we also can refer to a container or a lorry or truck as reefers as well when they have a refrigeration unit. Great. Number two, which of these is not a catwalk? Well, you should have looked up catwalk. Is it a way of walking? Well, actually, no. Catwalk is a raised walkway. You hear it a lot when people talk about it for fashion shows, the runway. You hear that as well. You call it the catwalk, where models are walking along, showing off the clothes. But we also find catwalks on ships, you see them on land, they're usually a raised passageway above the decks that you're walking over. So here's a picture of a typical catwalk that you would have on land or on a vessel. So which one is correctly? A narrow path, that is, yes, a platform for fat, yeah, that's so a way of walking. So I've never heard of a, a catwalk or a dog walk or no. So that was the answer there. Number three, what is the IMDG? Uh, okay, you should have looked that up as well. And if you found out the answer, it comes from EMO, right? The International Maritime Organization based in London has what's called the IMDG code, the International Maritime Dangerous Goods Code. And this is like the accepted international gu guideline for transporting cargo safely that is dangerous, dangerous goods or hazardous materials by water on vessels. It's intended, the code is intended to protect you, the crew member, and to prevent marine pollution so you can safely transport hazardous materials by vessels. Uh, it's recommended for governments for adoption and use as a basis for national regulations. And so actually, if you see these symbols down here, we call them diamonds, the, the EU, the European Union, and EMO have come together with a set of nine classifications for the different hazardous materials. We're going to go into that a little bit later, at actually at the very end of this lesson.
but you should know now the IMDG and that's updated quite often there's a new one coming out this year 2015 Great. So it's a code for cargo handling. Number four, when you bundle, what are you doing? Lifting cargo, storing cargo, arranging cargo. Well, bundling is actually arranging cargo. A lot of times you'll have different pieces of cargo that need to be put together on a pallet so they're easily manipulated, managed. So bundling, that's putting pieces of cargo together in a manageable unit that can be handled by a forklift truck. So you can do it in lots of different ways, but generally strapping. So here you see some, I think it's engine pieces that are strapped together. They're stacked and then they're strapped together with straps. You can do it with lashing, lashing with ropes. So here's some pipes that are lashed and I think it's three by three are the units and then the forklifts Prines can go right in there and pick it up. And then I'm sure you've seen this stretch wrapping. You see that a lot with boxes, cardboard boxes put on pallets. You don't want them to fall off when you're being when it's being lifted up by the forklift. So you have plastic wrap around it. We call that stretch wrapping. Great, so that's bundling. That's arranging and lashing or strapping or wrapping the cargo so it can be dealt with, managed as one unit by a forklift. Great. And so the last one, where do you put dunnage? What is dunnage? Should have looked up that word. A, overboard. I'm sorry, zero tolerance with anything going overboard. So that's not it. Between cargo, yes. Inside containers, well, actually, that would work as well. I've got a picture here of what's called dunnage bags. It's inside a container, so that one would have worked, but it's actually meant, dunnage is meant to mean the material placed among cargo, below it, above it, between it, to separate it, sort of as a buffer to protect it from banging into each other and breaking. So dunnage can be anywhere from wool blankets or any kind of styrofoam peanuts I'm sure you've seen but you can see here in this case you have dunnage bags quite often used in the shipping logistics industry they're inflatable you can blow them up and bring them down to store them. okay so that is dunnage the stuff that you use to put between cargo to cushion it so it doesn't break in transport great let's go on to the next two exercises exercises two and three here we're going to be looking at vocabulary. We're going to go through the different types of cargo we talked about last time. Perishable, there's fragile here, but we have a few more types. I want you to match up those cargo types with the definitions on the right. And then exercise three, put these types of goods underneath under the correct cargo type. And be aware that some of these types of goods can go under not just one, but two different types of cargo. All right, so take three minutes and we'll be right back. A census taker once tried to test me. I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. Quid pro quo, doctor.
rubs the lotion on its skin or else it gets the hose again. I do wish we could chat longer, but I'm having an old friend for dinner. Right, that was a little bit of Silence of the Lambs for you, and if you didn't see that, you got to catch it, or Red Dragon, the prequel to it. Two books I highly recommend from author Thomas Harris. But okay, enough of that. Let's go on to the answers. Match the words with the definitions. Well, we talked about perishable has a short life, something that can go bad quickly, or we say to spoil or to rot. So that one you got toxic. That means poisonous. So something that's toxic can kill you by poisoning you. Okay, and then household. When we talk about household items, we're talking about things that you use in the home. And another word we can say is domestic use. Okay, great. So household and then expandable. The word span means to actually get larger, to increase in size. Expandable. Okay, so explosive. Well, I think, yeah, and stable is probably the best word there. I would just say it goes boom, right? Inflammable, well, you can actually say flammable or inflammable. I hear flammable a lot more. It's something that catches fire, burns easily, catches fire easily. And then livestock, that's the word we use for farm animals. Cows or sheep or goat is referred to as livestock or farm animals. And then fragile, we went through last time. You should have had that. Easily broken or damaged. Fragile. Great. Well, I'm going to give you a few more words here. If you want to go ahead and stop the video, take a look at these words. If there's any of these words you don't know, it might be a good idea to get a dictionary and look them up. These are really good adjectives to describe cargo or different states of cargo. Don't really have time now to go through them all, but if you want to stop the video and do it on your own, that's a really good piece of homework to work on. All right, let's get on to exercise three here. You're supposed to take these different goods and classify them under the correct cargo type. Perishable, toxic, household, inflammable, fragile, and livestock. So let's start with the first one. Medical supplies. Well, it really kind of depends on what type of medical supplies you're talking about. If it's uh, sutures and things that you have just to wear, that probably would be no big deal. But for example, if it's human tissue or blood, then it could go bad if it's not transported refrigerated or in good time. So I put down perishable, but also fragile because you think some medicines, uh, IV fluids is transported in plastic, but some medicines are transported in bottles, glass bottles, so that could be fragile. So that one was kind of tricky. Fine arts, well, that is something you would find in the home, in businesses as well, but it's generally old, so it's something that would be fragile, needs to be taken good care of. It should be packed really well, but also should be taken good care 
while traveling. So I put that under both household and fragile. Eggs, well that's fresh food. That's something that's going to go bad if not refrigerated. So that would go under perishable. But I also put that under fragile because you have to be careful when transporting eggs, not crushing them with something on top or dropping them or they'll break. Bananas, fruits, yeah, would go bad without refrigeration, so I put that under perishable. And then frozen fish, frozen says it, it needs to be kept frozen so it keeps its state, so that would go under perishable. And then washing machines, that's something you find in the home, so that qualifies as a household item. As well, it's got moving parts, so it has to be, the care has to be taken when transporting, not to drop or crush, to injure, to damage the machine. So I put that under fragile as well, as well as household ceramics. That is items made of clay, which are molded and then put in under hot flame to get them hard. So ceramic, you find bowls, you can find cups made of ceramic. So that's something that could break easily if care is not taken. So I put that under fragile as well. Gasoline, as I'm sure you know, can ignite quite quickly if there is a source of ignition. So that I put under flammable. But also toxic if you get it if you ingest it inside of you or get it on your skin, it needs to be washed off uh, so it can really hurt. So I put that under toxic as well. Race horses, that's the only animal that we had here besides fish, which was frozen. So race horses, I'll put under livestock. Although I don't quite qualify that as a farm animal, but it would go under the animals. Nuclear waste. Well, that could have been, well, not medical supplies, but what you find from hospitals after certain treatments, that we would put under toxic. It has, needs to be treated quite carefully so that you do not get contaminated yourself. And then cylinders of oxygen, if you remember back to Unit 5A, Exercises 1 and 2, I showed you what happens. If they are exposed to any kind of, kind of source of ignition to fire, kaboom. Boom. So cylinders of oxygen definitely go under flammable. Sugar cane, we're not talking about actually granulated sugar, we're talking about sugar cane is a fresh, I'm going to say fruit, it's a food, so it can go bad if it is not transported uh, with refrigeration, so I put that under perishable. And then carpets. Well, that would be found in the home, and I couldn't really think of anything else to do with carpets. So there you have it. Okay, so now exercise four on page 92. Now we're going to do a little bit of reading. We're going to look at a manifest. It's an important word to get under your belts. Manifest, ship's manifest. And that's basically the list of cargo that a ship is carrying. So look at this manifest for a ship and answer the questions that follow. Now, there's a couple words in the manifest that don't quite fit. So that's sort of an extra assignment for you. If you can find the two words, or at least one word, which doesn't quite work in this manifest, not really the proper word you use, that's even an added bonus. Here we go, three minutes. I don't like The BBC would like to apologize for the following announcement.
The BBC would like to announce that the next scene is not considered suitable for family viewing. It contains scenes of violence involving people's heads and arms getting chopped off. There are also scenes of naked women with floppy breasts. Give me that, you snotty-faced heap of parrot dropping. What? Shut your festering gob, your tits. Your type really makes me puke, you vacuous, coffee-nosed, malodorous pervert! Okay, there was a little bit of British culture, a little bit of British humor with Monty Python. Right, let's go into exercise four. Where is the Thomasina registered? Well, ship's name, Thomasina, nationality... Panamanian. So yes, so you could say Panama, but when you see a ship registered under the Panamanian flag or Liberia or Bahamas, these vessels are what's known as flag of convenience vessels that are flying flags of convenience. And what we mean by that, these ship owners are not based in those countries. So the ship is actually just registered in the country. Why? Well, these countries offer lower taxes and also they don't require as much regulation as perhaps a member state of an emo uh, country would require. So a lot of ship owners will out flag to these flags of convenience to avoid higher taxes and excessive regulation. Great. How much cargo can the Thomasina carry? Well, there's the word cargo capacity. So it's 20,000 tons. And why is there no dangerous goods classification? Well, it's rice. And so rice is not dangerous. But actually, when rice gets wet, if it, rice is being carried as bulk cargo and it gets wet, well, it doesn't liquefy. We talked about that being a problem with iron ore or nickel ore, where it liquefies, causing the free surface effect and devastating the stability. But here, the rice will expand. You know, when you cook rice, it expands almost to double its size, maybe triple. And if you've got it under a hatch, it could blow the hatches off, literally. So maybe not dangerous, but you need to make sure it doesn't get wet as bulk. So what is she carrying? Well, we just said it's 3,098 tons of rice. Where is the cargo loaded? Well, if we go up here, embarkation point, Colombo, Sri Lanka. Well, that was the word I had a problem with. Sorry, Tony, but embarkation refers to boarding passengers when it's a passenger vessel. That word is strictly for passengers. So I sort of went back into what I used in the last video when we looked at a bill of lading, but I also looked on the internet. I found here the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. This is for a cargo manifest for a vessel under five tons, so not very big, back in 2008. But here they're using port of lading port of lading. Well, if you remember, we talked about a bill of lading. This is what I showed last time. And here, it's port of loading. So, you know what? I'm going to change this into either one or the other, port of lading or port of loading, as the designation for where you pick up cargo. Great. How long does it take to load the cargo? Well, uh, begin load date, finish load date, first to the third, so that's two days. And then where is Thomasina going? Well, here we have deparkation point. Well, 
actually. Yeah, and that was Um al Qazir Bazar, Iraq. I'm sure I'm not pronouncing that correctly. But deparkation, debarkation, that actually works for offloading cargo and passengers. So that one works. With passengers, we generally say disembarkation. Disembarkation. But okay, deparkation works. But again, I went to this bill of lading that I had here, and here they said port of discharge. Okay, I generally think of discharge when you are unloading liquid cargo, but all right, we'll look at that one. And then here also on the U.S. The US Department of Homeland Security's cargo manifest, port of arrival. So I'm going to change that one as well to port of arrival or port of discharge instead of embarkation and debarkation point. And when will Thomasina arrive? Well, here we have, that's when she sailed the 4th. She's arriving. We have this acronym here, ETA. It's going to be on the 13th of October, and ETA stands for Estimated Time of Arrival. As well, you have ETD, Estimated Time of Departure, when you're going to take off. So those are two good acronyms to know. Right, so now exercise five. Just going to take two minutes for this, and you're going to read this accident report. If you remember last time, I talked about DRI as one of the dangerous cargoes being in the news lately or the last 10 years. That's direct reduced iron pellets. And if they get wet, they overheat and they ignite. And as well, they give off hydrogen gas. Well, this accident report talks about a similar type of cargo, which was not listed as dangerous and caused an accident. So go ahead and read this and then answer the questions, one to six, whether they're true or false based on what you read. I'll give you the answers in two minutes. Well, hello, beautiful. Let's wind the clocks back a year. These cops and lawyers wouldn't dare cross any of you. I mean, what happened? Did your, your balls drop off? <laughs> right. That was from Batman Dark Knights. Great. So, exercise five. On 18th of April 1998, there was an explosion on board the container vessel Sea Land Mariner. So you study this information about the accident and say which of the statements are true or false. So this is an 
accident reports. The cargo, total of 1,500 containers, so it's not that big of a ship. And we talked about ships manifest, the list of the cargo. Well, here is a DCM, another acronym, kind of nice for you to learn, dangerous cargo manifest, a particular manifest for just the dangerous cargo on board. So here there were 61 of the 51, 1,500 containers that were listed on the DCM, but there was some containers not listed on the DCM. Non-dangerous cargo, which was including 20 containers of palmaric beads, expandable PBEs, but unfortunately these, these PBEs belong under class 9 of the IMDG dangerous goods code. So they are dangerous cargo but we're not listed on the manifest as such. So the PBB, PBEs were stowed in number 7 cargo hold and guess what? That's where the explosion happened. Location was in number 7 cargo hold and what happened? Well just like the DRIs so when they get wet they give off hydrogen. Well these PBEs for some reason they gave off flammable vapors. I don't know from what, but the welding work on the catwalk above the cargo hold number seven ignited because you had flammable vapors coming from the PBEs. Casualties, talk about casualties, we're talking about injuries or death. Two fitters missing, presumed loss overboard. Electrician and an AB with minor injuries. Man. So this was a pretty serious accident. So number one, all the ship's cargo was dangerous. Well, no, that's false because we had a mixture. There was supposedly only 61 containers, but actually there were more. They just weren't listed on the DCM. All dangerous cargo was listed on the DCM? No, that was the problem. PBE is classed by IMDG as dangerous, yes under class 9, so that's true. PBEs were not listed on the DCM, that was true, that was the problem, the PBEs, a dangerous cargo, was not on the dangerous cargo manifest. And so now 5, PBE produces dangerous gases, yes, that was the problem, and they ignited the welding work going on the catwalk above cargo number, cargo hold number 7. No one was seriously hurt, no, we had casualties, we had two fitters missing, and an electrician may be able-bodied seaman with minor injuries. So that was false. Somebody did definitely get hurt and two people were lost. Okay, so let's go on to exercise 6, uh, page 94. Here we're going to talk about warnings and instructions. You're going to match or take these phrases that you see and complete the warning notices down below. You can see the example. Warning, you add that, that's one of the phrases, hydrofluoric acid, wear, and then fill in the blank, protective clothing at all times. So take two minutes, take these phrases here. You have 12 different phrases. We just took two, so that's 10. You can cross those out, but we have only eight places. So two of the phrases are not going to fit in anywhere. Two minutes, here you go. I gotta get me one of those. Executioner. Your compassion is a weakness your enemies will not share. That's why it's so important.
Bruce. He's supposed to be dead. Sorry to disappoint. Great. That was a little more Batman this time from Batman Begins, the first in the trilogy. Right. So, add these phrases to the warning notices. Notices. Number one, highly blank handle, well, handle with care. That's an expression you hear all the time. Highly, I think the only highly toxic material matches with handle with care. Highly hazardous to health might have gone in there, handle with care. But other than that, I don't see highly danger of contamination. That doesn't quite work in there. Okay, number two, always, I think, wipe down work surfaces after work is the only one that really fits in there well. Okay, goods store upright, blank goods. I think we're going to go for fragile. Fragile goods store upright, not on the side or upside down so they don't break. Here we go. Radioactive material. And what would you say here? Uh, maybe danger of contamination. Yeah, that you can be infected. Well, I guess that's the right word. Number five, beware. This waste is blank. This waste is toxic material. Might have worked. We've already used that one. Hazardous to health. Yeah, that one goes there. So beware, this waste is hazardous to your health. Number six, use blank, highly dangerous. Use care, and the other word is caution, extreme caution. So use care, use extreme caution when, or just highly dangerous. And the last one here, seven, a blank operating forklift truck. Well, warning, no, that doesn't quite. Take care. Take care when operating forklift truck. So these expressions, handle with care, very common. And hazardous to health, use extreme caution, and take care when, for example, operating a forklift truck. Try to learn those and have those with you. Speaking of forklift trucks, I don't know if you've seen this video before, but you definitely want to take care when you're operating forklifts. In a Moscow warehouse, an out of control forklift driver has given a new meaning to drink driving. He lost control of his vehicle and slammed into stock shelves holding thousands of bottles of cognac and vodka. The chain reaction soon left him very much under the influence of drink. The accident will leave the alcohol retailer with a nasty financial hangover. And it's estimated, it's estimated over $100,000 worth of stock was downed. Luckily, no one was seriously hurt, and the driver got away with a minor leg injury. It makes you wonder if the driver was actually under the influence while operating the forklift or not. It doesn't really tell you in the news report. Okay, let's finish up now with the last two exercises, seven and eight. Instead of taking time out to do this, just go ahead and pause the video and you can work with a partner or study the pictures by yourself and try to understand what they mean. And as well, just pause the video and write down what instructions you think should go with the pictures. I'm just going to jump into it right now. But go ahead and pause the video so you have time to do this on your own. Okay, number one, that's a universal sign for no smoking. Or you can say, do not smoke. This number two here, that's actually referring back to the emo category eight of hazardous cargo. And this is for corrosive liquids. Corrosive, that means it's capable of destroying solid material, like metal, for example. Acid would be a corrosive liquid. Okay, So here you have the nine different classifications by the UN together with the IMDG. These are the classes for hazardous cargoes. We've gone through that before, just wanted to show it to you again. And so now here, number three, you can see that zero Celsius, which is freezing. So that would be a sign for keep frozen. And then here, the blue sign, you generally see that when it regards your PPE. What 
the heck is PPE? Well, one of them is your safety glasses. So you can say wear safety glasses, or you can say eye protection required. But a lot of times you'll see these signs for PPE required, which means personal protective equipment, which is hard hats, eye protection, hearing protection, work boots, steel toed work boots. So the blue signs generally refer to PPE. And here is a universal sign, and no, it does not mean pirates, I'm sorry. It talks about danger of death, or you could say very dangerous, beware, look out, but it's a uh, skull and crossbones is the universal sign for very dangerous, beware. So again, the blue sign with the boots, wear safety boots or protective footwear required. Generally, again, we're talking about PPE personal protective equipment. And then you can see down in this number seven, you see a tree withering away, a fish dead. Well, that could be, what do you think? Well, contamination, danger, caution, or environmental hazard, take care, might be the one. And this last one, again, goes back to the UN and EMO's classification. This is number three. And you see a fire being started here. That's for flammable. Flammable liquids, uh, category three in the EMO hazardous cargo. So here again, you can see class three, flammable or inflammable liquids, you can say. Class four, solids, inflammable solids. Great. Well, you know what? There is a whole bunch of cargo delivering packing symbols. Some of them we've seen already up here in the top left corner. Handle with care. Fragile. This side goes down. This side goes up. Don't let it get wet. Here's radioactivity. Here's the skull and crossbones. Magnetism. Shock hazard. Keep out of sunlight. There is a whole bunch of them. Some we've gone through, but we don't have the time for going through it now. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye for now.